Hello, Math 30-1 students. I believe we are on um, lesson four today. Uh, this is a great lesson. Uh, actually, I don't have a whole heck of a lot to teach you. Today, I get to take the last three lessons and just put them together, just practice everything. So I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot to teach today, but uh, I think we're working on pages 16 through 19. So let's see what we can get to. All right, so we have been playing around with this equation here and we should become intimately familiar with it. It is on the formula sheet, it is on the left-hand side of the formula sheet, oh, about halfway, two-thirds of the way down, you'll find it. So, let's talk about what we know. Day one was all about H and K. H is backwards, I've mentioned this many times, but H is going to move us left and right. K makes perfect sense, K does exactly what it's supposed to do, K moves us up and down. So, x plus 3, left, plus 7, up 7. x minus 4, right, minus 5, down. We talked about a and b as reflections on lesson 2. When a is negative, if a is negative, this affects your y's, and this is a reflection over the x-axis. So if this was the x-axis down here, what used to be there will now come down here. All right. When b is negative, it influences x. So I don't happen to have an, uh, um, a y-axis, but what used to be over here would now come over here. That was lesson two. Lesson three was stretches. A is a vertical stretch. A big A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, makes you taller, stretches you vertically. A between 0 and 1, 1 half, uh, 0 0.2 is going to make you small. I don't want to use the word compress you because it's not technically terminology that we use, but think about your graph getting squished. B is a horizontal stretch. I remind you that B is not the amount of the stretch. If B is 7, you actually become 1 seventh as wide as you used to be. So B is the reciprocal of the horizontal stretch. If B was 1 third, then your graph is going to become 3 times wider. All right, let us get down to page 16, and I believe that that is lesson 4. Yes, there we are. All right, so here's the good news. Everything that I have been saying is now right here. It talks about these things. So I'm not going to repeat this, but you can read this if you want. Down here, this isn't vital, but it's just showing you what happens if your original was x squared, where all the letters come into play. So A would come out front and multiply the whole thing, B would just be inside the function in essence. I've not seen the diploma spend a ton of time dealing with this. They're much more concerned, do you know these letters and what they do? All right, we come down to the bottom of page 16. I think I've mentioned this in the previous lessons, but you must do your stretches, reflections, before or your movements. You have two ways to look at this. You can either just say, oh, I'll go left to right, deal with the letters from left to right, you're perfect. You can even argue, deal with the letters alphabetically, A before B, B before H, H before K. Now, in the grand scheme of things, A and B, I don't care which one you do first, but you gotta do A and B before you do H and K. Again, amongst H and K, I don't care which one you do first. It's kind of like saying this, you're going to deal with your grandparents before you're going to deal with the grandkids, right? You're out for dinner, the grandparents get fed first, and then the grandkids get their food, all right? Now, do I care whether or not it's grandma, grandpa, or grandpa, grandma? Not in the big sense, but I'm certainly going to make sure that my grandparents get their food before the grandkids get the food. All right, so down here, 
we've got some function. We are going to do a horizontal stretch. Oh, that's a B issue, is it not? And a vertical translation of 4 down. I believe that, that is a K issue. So, what is the new equation? Well, not a problem. So, let's talk. Now, because we are dealing with a B value, I shouldn't say B value, a, a B concept, the B stretch is one half. That does not mean that B is one half. I remind you that the stretch is going to be the reciprocal of B. There it is. So notice that the stretch is one half, the B value is two. Vertical translation of four down, lo and behold, it's minus four. All right. Now, in the grand scheme of things, technically, order here doesn't matter. And the reason I say that is because this is an X issue and this is a Y issue. Now, had there been some sort of vertical stretch, the vertical stretch must come before the vertical movement. But because these two things aren't dealing on the same letter, this is X, this is Y. Realistically, it doesn't make a difference. But I'll say this, if you go left to right, if you do stretches first, movement second, you're fine. Now, I realize that the question never asked, but just to make sure, here is some, um, um, what's the word, mapping notation. There's the phrase I'm looking for. So, we know that there is a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half, meaning all of the x's are getting multiplied by a half. All of the y's are coming down four. There, ah, that's an ugly, I gotta fix that bracket, that was embarrassing. That's better, let's see if we can do this. There, that's better. So, it doesn't matter, maybe the diploma will give you words and want the new equation. Maybe the diploma will give you words and want the mapping notation. You've got to be comfortable with all of this, and that's what today is all about. All right, on to page 17. What do we got here? Suppose you got some function. This time there's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three halves. Oh, so what that means is my B value is not three halves. Isn't this going to be a B value of two thirds? Because the B is always the reciprocal of the, there she is, of the stretch. Now, we've got two units left. Okay, here we go. I am going to make a mistake. I will put money on it that if this is a multiple choice, that the diploma is going to have this answer as one of the answers. And students are going to say, oh yeah, Chandler told me that it's a reciprocal of the B. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I'm okay, good, good, good there. Look at that, two units left, plus two, not a problem. Now, this is a common wrong answer. And the reason it's wrong is we need to go back. Notice that B does not touch X when there's an H. Meaning, when you do this, you need to make sure that B is not touching the H value. Now, I was okay in the previous question having it touch because there was no H. If you wanted to, and I'm not saying you have to, but if you want to come in and say, no, 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 Bs don't touch Xs, I'm okay with that. The diploma will never do that, but you're not wrong. But you must be very careful when you've got a B and an H in the same question that you always have B factored out. All right, diploma loves this question. Does order matter? Yes. You must do your stretches before your movements. Don't you ever move left, right, and then stretch. That is wrong. It is always A, B, H, K in that order. All right. Oh, look at this. So deal with stretches and reflections first, then deal with your translations, your movements last. Now, in the grand scheme of things, 
If this happened to, and I'm totally changing it, but don't go change it. If this happened to have been a negative, I really don't care if you reflect over the y-axis and then stretch it, or if you stretch it and then reflect it. That's okay, because it's all going to come out in the wash. But the key is you got to deal with B before H. You got to deal with A before K. And that's what this thing is saying here. It then always says express your function in factored form. What do they mean by that? Pull this B out. All right. Describe how this graph of the function relates to its original. Now, I'm going to read this out, and I guarantee that students will say correctly, vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of 3. Yes, that is true. Then students will say a vertical translation 5 units up. Yes, this is true. Students will then say correctly, a horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of a half. Yes, that is true. I will guarantee that a student in this province is going to say that there is a horizontal movement of six units right. And that is incorrect. Because look at this B value touching X. Before I can properly do this question, I must factor that 2 out. So what it means is, I'm going to get this. The 2 comes out, and when you pull it off the x, that 6 now becomes 3. There she is. Now, students, we can talk. And I've already mentioned, here it is again, a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 about the x-axis. This thing is getting taller. Now, you want to deal with this next? Great. In sentences, you want to come over here deal with this next? Great. Because we're dealing in sentences, the order isn't that important. There will be a vertical movement of five units up. There is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one-half about the y-axis. There is a horizontal movement of three units to the right. My students, I cannot stress this enough. If the B value is touching X and you got some H value, you've got to deal with this. You cannot leave that 2 touching the X. I guarantee that if there's a distractor, that 6 units to the right will be a distractor, and it is wrong. All right, let's see what we can do at the bottom of page 17 here. Now, we got some transformations that are applied to some generic function. Now, they put them in just any old order. We got to make sure that we pay attention to what's going on. Horizontal translation of two units left, if I'm not mistaken, that is an H issue. So, I'm going to give myself a nice little F of X, and to go two units left is plus two. All right. We've got a reflection in the x-axis. A reflection in the x-axis means positive y's become negative y's, and negative y's become positive y's. This is influencing y. This is an A issue. So I believe that we are going to get a nice little negative on our A value. Okay, what do we have next? A vertical stretch. Ah, that's an A issue, by about the x-axis by a factor of a quarter. So, I mean, if this function used to be like this, now this function is merely going to be a quarter as long as it used to be, right? As tall, I guess, is what I should have said. So, this is an A issue. The A makes perfect sense. So, lo and behold, we get an A value of one quarter. Because of the second dot, it's negative, but that's fine. And then lastly, what do I got here? A vertical translation of three units down. I do believe that that is a K issue. So lay it, lo and behold, we have three units down. Now, 
I admit, this question had nothing to do with um, mapping notation, but just because I like to discuss it, if this question wanted mapping notation, then it would have looked something like this. Because I'd have no problem if the diploma, instead of saying write the function, said write the mapping notation. Well, because we are going two units left, all of the x's are going to be subtracting 2. That's what's happening because of the x's. All of the y's are being multiplied by negative a quarter. And then they are subtracting 3. So I admit the question didn't ask for mapping notation. Here's me just putting the mapping notation in because the diploma might ask you to take words and turn it into a function notation. Maybe they'll give you words and ask you to do mapping or mapping to function notation. You've got to be able to handle all three of these. All right, there is the bottom of page 17. Aha, now we're talking. Okay, this is classic diploma. All right, now here's what's cool about this. I have seen this question many times on the diplomas, and they love it as a numerical response. All right? And so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to read you out a bunch of potential answers, and then show you how the diploma would do it. You know that the diploma is going to write out that there is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about the x-axis. There's a vertical stretch by a factor of a half about the x-axis. There is a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half about the y-axis. There is a horizontal stretch by a factor of one half about the y-axis. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, yes, about the y-axis. There is a horizontal movement of five units left. There is a horizontal movement of five units right. There is a vertical movement of eight units up. There is a vertical movement of eight units down. So I think I just kind of listed eight different options. So imagine the diploma for each of those eight options, listing them one through eight, and you have to choose the four correct answers, and they make it numerical response. If you get three of them correct and get one wrong, they give you a big fat zero. So this is a very common answer, uh, or sorry, question on the diploma. Another thing they love, you see this minus eight? Imagine that it said plus eight over on the left-hand side. Diploma loves to play around with this. All right, here we go. Describe the transformations. Here are correct statements. There is a vertical stretch by a factor of two about the x-axis. There is a horizontal stretch by a factor of two about the y-axis. There is a horizontal movement of five units left. There is a vertical movement of eight units down. That was the correct answer for right here. Now, I realize that the diploma never, or sorry, this question never asked for it, but I'm just going to write down the um, uh, mapping notation because it's going to help us on that second dot. I believe that all the X's are being doubled and then they are subtracting 5. Here are the x movements and stretches. All of the y's are being doubled, and I believe that they are coming down 8. That's better. So, what are we doing here? This 3 is not the 3 being doubled. 6 minus 5 becomes 1. Boom! The x just became 1. The y is doubling. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 8 is negative 8. There it is. All right. So, lo and behold, the diploma needs you to understand this. Now, they were nice. They factored this out. If that had been 1 half x plus 5, you'd have to pull the 1 half off, and then you'd actually get plus 10, right, if the one half had been touching this x. So watch out for that. All righty, change up my color here. What do we got on this one? Write an equation of the transform function in each of the following scenarios. Got it. Ah, the classic diploma. So 
horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter about the y-axis. No problem. Well, I do believe that, that means that my B value is going to be 4. There's a horizontal stretch and is vertically translated 5 units down. I had left some space here because I wasn't sure if there was going to be an A issue or not, but that's fine. There is my answer. I got a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter, which means the B value is the reciprocal. Vertically translated five units down. Got you. Yep, love it. All right. The graph of F of X. Vertical stretch by a factor of three-fifths. Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. Three-fifths. All right. Uh, got you. About the x-axis. Reflected in the y-axis. Oh, a reflection in the y-axis is going to make my b value negative. So isn't that going to be a negative x? And then translated two units to the left. Oh, okay, my apologies. I, I thought I was done here. But to go two units to the left... No problem, no problem. Look at this. Negative x and two units to the left. Got you. Two units to the left goes like that. All right. Now, some of you are freaking out, and I'm going to deal with this in a second. I want you to look at this, and I believe that, yep, look at that vertical stretch above the x-axis. Got you. Reflected in the y-axis which means positive x's become negative, negative x's become positive. Yeah, gotcha, right there, look at that, b value is negative. And I got two units to the left. If there's a distractor on the diploma, this is distractor A, because this is wrong. Look at this b value touching my x, when in fact that there's an h value. Meaning, I've got to come in and put brackets there. Now we are correct. All right. Now, could the diploma hypothetically not put the brackets? Yes, they could. Look at this answer. It's currently wrong. But if the diploma wanted to do this, go back to purple here, and make that subtraction, make that back to a 2, that is technically a correct answer. It's not a common correct answer, but it is correct. I personally am a much bigger fan of saying going left makes that positive and then simply put a bracket around them. But I want you to realize that while that is the common correct answer, there's nothing wrong with that answer. It too is indeed correct. Alrighty, down here, what do we got? We got this point, not a problem. I believe that this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. That's a y issue. I believe that that's going to become negative 16. Is it not? We are 3 units to the left. You see that 6? Move it to the left. I think it just became a 3. There she is. 3 units to the left. Double the y's. Alright, no problem, no problem, no problem. I'm actually going to jump down to C because it's a little easier. All right, I do believe that my y is getting a negative on it because this is a reflection in the x-axis. So negative 8 is actually going to become positive 8. Oh, that was nice of it. You might think that my x's are tripling. They are not. I guarantee 18 is a common wrong answer. You are actually multiplying by a third. One third of 6, I believe, is 2. All right, that's good, that's good. All right, this is just unacceptable to me. I, I, I can't work with this. This plus 4 isn't supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a minus 4. All right, x's go 2 to the right. You see that 6? He just became an 8. And then the y's are 4 down. Negative 8, drop 4, becomes a negative 12. Do not accept that your y has anything beside it that is completely and utterly unacceptable. This guy right here, all right, what do I got? I do believe 
that it's going to be f of negative x. Gotcha, right there. No problem, no problem, no problem. And that 6 needs to come over, and she needs to become a minus 6. How do you get rid of a multiplying 3? Well, couldn't you multiply it by a third? Which means, lo and behold, my y values are getting multiplied by a third. That's how I get rid of that 3 on, in front of the y. All right, all right, here we go. So, talk to me. I believe that all the x's are getting a negative. You see this 6? She's about to get a negative, so she's about to become a negative 6. Got it. All right. Now, oh, this is not nice. I need one-third of my y, which is going to be negative eight-thirds. Ugh. And I need to subtract six. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't feel like doing mental math today. So, hello, world. I got negative eight. I got to multiply it by three. And then I subtract six. That's going to give me negative eight and two-thirds or negative 26 thirds. Not a very common answer, negative 26 thirds. I must admit, I think the diploma in this case would have probably made that instead of a negative eight, probably changed it to a negative nine in all honesty. But that's just my opinion. But fine, we multiplied the y by one third, the y got multiplied by one third, and then I subtracted six. All right, that's page 18. I think I'm on to my last page, and then we're good to go. As you can see, I'm not really teaching you much today. It's just pulling in the last three lessons all together. All right, here we are on the top of page 19. They seem to be giving us some words, and they would like us to turn it into some function notation. Not a problem. Here we go. We happen to have a new function, p of x. Got it. So I know that p of x is our new function, and it is supposed to be based on the fact that certain things are happening. All right. Well, what's going on here? It says that we are vertically stretched about the x-axis by a factor of 0.25, otherwise known as a quarter. You want to write 0.25, go for it. You want to write one quarter, go for it. But a vertical stretch is a y issue. I believe that makes my a value one quarter. Like I said, you want to write it as 0 0.25? Fine by me. All right. Then we happen to have f. And what do we got here? It then says reflected in the y-axis. Ah, which means if you were a positive x, now you are a negative x. If you were a negative x, now you are a positive x. I believe that's a B issue. So lo and behold, I have a B who is going to be negative. And then lastly, we got three units to the right. Oh, that's easy. That's an H. That's a Henry. We have three units to the right. And I've got an answer that looks something like this. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so I can see the F. Lovely. Now, I'm going to pause for a second because this is completely wrong. This is distractor A, if this was a multiple choice. How come? Because I have mentioned that your B value cannot touch X when there is an H. Meaning, the best answer here is to put this in brackets. That, to me, is the best answer. Totally correct. Now, is there another way to do this? Of course there is. Could the diploma forego the brackets and instead make that positive? Yes, they could, because you're still going to get your reflection in the y-axis. And because this thing says plus 3, you might think, oh, it's going left. But that's wrong. But remember, you'd have to factor out the negative. I'm not a huge fan of this answer, but it is correct. To me, the better answer is to properly have the B value not touching the X when there is an H. I'm just going to make sure that I'm right. Vertical stretch by about the X axis by a factor of a quarter. There she is. This thing is now one quarter as tall. A reflection in the Y axis. Yeah, you know it right there. And we are three units to the right. Excellent. I believe that takes care of the top of page 
19 for us. All right. What do we got down here? You know, I'm going to jump down to this bottom one because let's see if I can redeem myself. What's going on here? This thing used to be two notes. Sorry. The graph of the function gx is right there. Okay, who's who? So, uh, it's transformation. f of x is original. All right. Determine the equation. Not a problem. So, something used to be eight units. Now it's four units wide. I believe that there was a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter. To have a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter, if I am not mistaken, it's going to make my B value 4. Now, I'm just going to read this again and make sure that I'm not messing this up. But, let's just confirm. The original is F of X. We became G of X. We used to be 8. We are now 1 quarter as wide as we used to be. Therefore, I like my B value as 4. Yes, I'll give you that. We used to be 4 units tall. Now we are 8 units tall. I believe that we are twice as tall as we used to be. Are we not? We used to have a vertex here. Now the vertex has moved us up two units. I believe that we are up two units. And lastly, we used to be here, but now we seem to be seven units to the left. If I am not mistaken, that's better. So I think we took f of x, who was the blue guy, the big guy on the origin. We have thus made him one quarter as wide, got a B value of four, twice as tall, A value of two. We moved seven units to the left, X plus seven. We moved us two units up, plus two on the end. All right, I think I redeemed myself. All right, now, this one. All that's going on here, you've got to watch out for this. This is unacceptable to me. All right, you've got to get that one half out. So this becomes 2F. I believe that the B value stays as one half. That's good. But look at that H value. We are not one unit to the left. We are actually two units to the left. That's better. So all that's happening here, students, is I want you to take all my y values and double them. I want you to take all the x values, double them, and subtract 2. So, I'll just quickly do this as a mapping notation. I think what I just said was that all the x's are being doubled and subtracting 2. So, it's 2x subtract 2. I think all the y values are doubling. There we go. So here's all you do when they give you a graph. I don't think this is the greatest graph in the world, but you just grab a couple of points. This point is clearly negative 2 comma 4. This point is clearly 3 comma 4. This point appears to be 5 comma 0. And I'm kind of assuming that this is negative 3 comma zero just take those four points stick them into your mapping notation come up with new points connect your dots you all passed kindergarten i'm assuming you can connect dots right here this one they're trying to mess with us i don't like this multiplying two so this thing right off the bat is going to become a one half because we're going to take the function and we're going to multiply it by a half. And you see this 2 divided by 2? You're going to get a plus 1 over here. So they're really trying to mess with us here. Now, I'm setting you up for some success here. Notice this negative. Unacceptable. You must pull that negative off the x, which makes this actually a 
positive 1. What I can now tell you is all of my y's are cut in half. All of my y's are adding 1. All of my x's get a negative and subtract 1. So, it's not the nicest question in the world, but here's my mapping notation. So imagine the x comma y. All my x's are getting a negative, and all my x's are subtracting 1. All of my y's are being cut in half, and all of my y's are adding 1. There it is. So this mapping notation should have had this x comma y arrow. I just ran out of space. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab a point here which appears to be negative 5 comma 1, negative 3 comma 1, negative 2 comma 0, 0 negative 2, 2 negative 1, 2, 4. So that's 2 negative 4. And then I'll probably grab 4 negative 4. There are my points. I will then do my mapping notation on each of them connect my dots. All right, my students, that was a little under 40 minutes. You got an assignment right there. You know where to find me if you need me, but hopefully what you realize today is that you do things in alphabetical order, left to right. You must, you must, you must never allow them to have a B value on an X when there's an H, unless you got brackets. Look at this negative on this X and there's no bracket. That is just unacceptable. Watch out for that. All right. Take care, my students. Thanks for your time.